bring mm-hmm. trust on top and change the stream needle. And naturally, we're streaming The Last Federation. Ah, there's no image for the game. That's weird. <laughs> Alright. So who should we burn first? Uh, we'll do an advanced start. Because you guys are going to decide what we're actually going to do. So I'm going to do normal and normal. But where's our crash landing? Uh, commercials are in my way, so... Okay. Yeah, I'm waiting to see it yet. So... Acution, Andor, Boreen, Burlust, Ivok, <coughs> Peltian. Wait, isn't Burlust the. Uh, isn't Burlust the uh, warlike race? Yes. Burlusk. I can't see. <coughs> I want to say. Oh, here also, we go. also, how do things sound? Burlusk Skylaxian. Skylaxian, aren't they good? Neutral? That's the point. No, the point is, we we want to piss off the guys that we're going to go to war with anyway. Thoraxian is in fact bugs, so we have one vote for Burlust, one vote for Skylaxian, one vote for Thor- Thoraxian. Change mine to you, Thoraxian. Okay, well, we're pissing off the bug people. I am the glad. We're going to do standard victory federation formation because... <coughs> hmm... We're going to be doing Standard Federation, because that's the only one I know. We're going to be starting at year zero. I feel like I want to skip tutorials. However, okay. however, I actually don't remember much how to play the game. The United States now owns Alberta. I'm glad. Hmm. What? And Are you going to do Iron Man? It is. Uh, we're now not going to be doing Iron Man because I got screwed over so often. Also, Roke, how does the game audio sound? Okay. Right now, there's a war between the United States, Prussia, Belgium, and Austria on one side, United Kingdom, and Netherlands on the other, all for a little dinky little piece of land. That's wasteland, essentially, up in Canada. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to do permadeath. If I die, then it's game over, but I can still reload old saves. You should do uh, independent betrayal minions. That only works in the betrayal in the betrayal game type. Otherwise, What's the betrayal game type? There's multiple modes that were introduced with some of the expansions. And... One of those modes was Betrayal, where you're actually trying to revive your own species via cloning. That sounds nice. That does sound nice. Problem is, is I don't remember how to play the standard game, and I don't want to try to do Betrayal where you're trying to basically formulate your own society. So I was just going to go with standard for now. So let's begin. I am the last of the murdered race of Hydrules. We took to the stars and shot down the man launchers of everyone else. My countrymen were the dictators of the solar system, so we kind of had it coming. Yes, that is me above, and you are me. This is our story. I was the sole survivor of a surprise attack by two other races thanks to a renegade mission I undertook, betraying the other Hydrules during spacefaring technology for our potential rivals. Turns out when you strap rockets to a moon, you can catch even the dictators off guard. <coughs> My ultimate goal? The creation of a peaceful, unified federation of planets. Only then can we be safe from the kinds of atrocities my race committed, and the kinds that were committed against us. Naturally, upon my crash landing at this planet, I was placed in captivity. Having no concept of my strength, they did not realize that I was merely waiting. I waited for years. Stardate. Kind of first. Part. First. One Proto-3000. 
My dream of Universal Federation is as alive as ever, and now the Thoraxians have finally gotten themselves into orbit. After spending so much time with me as a peaceful captive, they were ill-prepared for my escape. I've commandeered the first prototype exterminator, and now the Thoraxians are in hot pursuit. The Thoraxians do not have a, subsensed, a substantive space fleet yet, particularly now that I've stolen their flagship. But they are vicious, they are angry, and I'm sure their queen is already plotting her revenge. I have to be extremely careful. So, note to self, always steal from the Thoraxians. Mm-hmm. Here's an interesting thought. So, we're a Hydra, right? Yes. So, each of us is a head, then? Yes. <clears throat> but the problem is if we get too many people on board for the game at once, we'll have so many heads that it'll all get bogged down, and I'll actually have to go for voting through the proper channels. You are the main head. One sec, should we have invite Roic into the voice chat? I am keeping the voice chat a little bit low just so it doesn't remain as cluttered. Because, okay. the mo like, we've had seven people on board one time. And it becomes health. Yes, exactly. Like, the most I'll do is if I'm doing Jackbox, maybe I'll break that rule. But more often okay. than not, when I'm streaming, it's going to be limited to four, five-ish people max. Hail Hydra indeed. Here they come. Our uh, class was forced so severely that it would be almost impossible to lose, so now's a good time to put my ship through its paces. But I still have to be careful. If they manage to take out my ship, I'll be just as dead now as later. It's always your lonely flagship, plus whatever NPC allies you can muster, versus an indeterminate number of foes. Combat is turn-based with everyone moving and acting at the same time, gives me full orders. So let's back out. Prototype Exterminator. Mounts a massive gravity lance that fires automatically. Uh, full speed ahead. We're gonna just do auto fire, because I don't care about actually attacking them. I'm not gonna give them text, it's a horrible idea. We're trying to kill these people. You know what? I am so strong, I'm just gonna fly right next to their flagship and watch as I destroy them. Oh, my shields are actually taking damage. Objectives, destroy all flagships. That's not problematic. Okay, can you... okay. I'm actually gonna do this, because now my ship's being stupid. Fire at this thing, please. Oh, energy blaster. Duh. I should actually destroy his shields first. That seems like it's a good idea. And let's gravity lance this ship into non-existence. Does it have a shield still? Damn it, seriously. Thoraxians are weak. Thoraxians are weak, my ass. Okay, shields are down, so... Gravity Lance, Aim Fire. Oh, power management. Yes! I swear this is the last time I'll interrupt you during this battle. But now that you're getting a few turns in, there is one more bit that you probably ought to know. It's time to give you direct control over power distribution to your three subsystems. A. Increasing power to your weapons gives you higher damage output as well as longer range. B. Increasing power to your shields gives you faster shield regen and makes your shields more resistant to shots that hit them. C. Increasing power to your engines gives you faster movement, better turning, and a further distance that you can move each turn. To set your power levels, just click the various bars or use hotkeys. There are instructions in the tooltips. However, during each of your turns, your ship automatically changes power based on context. Let's suppose you don't issue a move order while it diverts engine power to weapons or shields instead. Not attacking, diverts to shields, etc. This keeps you from fiddling it through minor adjustments. I do agree, they are a menace in numbers. Automatic management doesn't make manual management pointless. Consider I'm low on health, so I'm going to crank up my shields for a while at the expense of... Hurry it up. I know the larger decision to the power system. So is the text in their head? Uh, this is our AI. Hey, how the heck did you do that? Curly Q. Waypoints simply hold down the... Oh, okay. Waypoints for shift movement. But I'm not going to need that for now. Can you kill this thing already? Thank you. 
All right, we're gonna crank down engines and boost shields so I don't kill myself. Anyway, uh, we'll energy fire on selected vessel, kill this one. We're gonna be burning the planet, right? Yeah. Uh, I would love to burn their planet, but I can't do that just yet. I need to actually have a Federation going before that's even viable. They're bugs, though. They are. Thraxians lost base power, effective power, and one armada. Oh no, they disapprove of me. No and... one likes Thraxians. We have to wipe them out to the last one. Wait, they only well, disapprove. You I know. just took their experimental technology and killed several of their ships. They have a negative yeah. 100 with me. That's just pure hatred. You can get lower than that, but that's just kind of throwing f that's just kind of throwing numbers at it and just saying that this is a thing that happens. Anyway, sweet mother of space sheep, it's the solar map. I'm going to introduce you to this gradually. For now, a lot of stuff is hidden. Don't worry about trying to create the Federation yet. We'll get to that later. It's not even an option yet. Right now, you have to worry about gaining credit to spend, and you also need to accumulate a goodly amount of influence with a few races. I'm going to suggest to start by delivering spacefaring tech to the Skylaxians and or, and or Peltians, and then run some dispatch missions for them to gain more credit. Yeah, let's give all of them spacefaring technology. They'll make a nice base for a Federation. I refuse the Skylaxians. Why? They're too... what's the word for it? Susceptive to figuring out that they're being pawns. Who cares? But if, Skylaxians if like us, also then... like unity. Oh, it's Skylaxians, sorry, I was thinking of Andors. No, yes, Skylaxians are... Well, it's... Yes, but if they... They're honorable, I don't like know, that. Even if they know they're pawns, they're going to serve us anyway. Okay, remember, Andors are the AI that are, like, pawn-like. Oh my gosh. Sky oh my gosh, the Andors have a... Um, they have a ring world as their home world. That's one of the unique types that I have for the DLC that I have available. That is nice. I approve of helping them. Help the Andors. I want Skylaxians to be helped. Well, we have to help the Skylaxians first, or we're just not going to have enough time as they get space flight in 31 seconds upon me unfreezing. Yeah. Also, oh, Roke, I know that you're a I know because that you're a bad if head. If we help them, we get money. We need money. We'll help them for now. All right. Two votes for Skylaxian. Roke, do you have anything else that you want to shove in on this? I think you just want to kill the Thraxians, which I can oblige. We all want to kill the Thraxians. Friendly actions. Feeling friendly, that's the spirit. If you're going to form a fe solar federation, you're going to have to make some friends. Some, but not a lot. Credit is a super important concept. This is your social currency, so to speak. Doing things for races that they appreciate, or in some cases doing things that intimidate a race, gain you more credit. You can then spend credit with almost any race to get them to do what you want, or with mercenaries. Credit is basically money, but it's a little more nuanced than that. But be warned, sometimes there are no friendly actions you can take on the race. Either you don't have anything to offer them, or they simply hate you too much to even accept even needed help. That's one of the many reasons that your influence with races is so important. Despite the actions you take later, your influence with the race goes up and down. High influence makes them more likely to cooperate, low influence makes them more likely to kill you. Well, let's deliver some spacefaring tech. I'll actually... Oh. I'll hire... Okay. No, I'll do this action, because this one's just one that allows me to get quests. So, we'll hire a diplomat and deliver spacefaring tech. Give us money. Basically. Oi! Okay, so stuff just got real, maybe. This is going to be incredibly easy or impossibly hard, depending on how many races are already spacefaring. Just be careful of alerting those spy probes and make your way to the drop zone. And that's it. Spy probes for each race all have a unique sensor test bullet pattern that they fire when any foreign object such as yourself is detected nearby. Get hit by any of those shots, or if you fire on the spy probes yourself, the probe involved will be alerted and you'll take a penalty to influence that race for each probe you alert. The goal is to maneuver cleverly so that you get past the probes that any of them sensing you, or at the very least with as few as possible sensing you. Early on, when there are only a couple of races or spacefaring, you may be able to just waltz over to the drop zone with a couple of easy turns. If that's the case, more power to you. Each one of these gets harder as you go on, so enjoy the ease while it lasts. 
Note that once you alert a spy probe, it turns hostile speeds up and starts unleashing much more damaging attacks. Fight those probes away from the main body of the unalerted probes if you can so that the stray shots of yours don't wake up anyone else. No weapons, no shields, all engine, and two shields. We're also going to make it so we're going to hold fire for now because we're just going to leave our options open. Considering that these spy probes are so horribly aligned, we're actually just going to move and hold fire. That's a horrible pattern to put yourselves in. Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. So there is actually a way. So trick them to fire there. Make a turn. And then make an immediate other turn. Go. And I might be able to pull it off by just tricking them into firing in line. Because they're not aiming directly at me. And so if I just go slowly enough, I might be able to get the bullets to not touch me. Speed it along. Good. The Skylaxians are now spacefaring. They are an advanced <coughs> species and disapprove of your race's past actions. However, they may just be the key to forming a federation, as their powers of persuasion over the other races are non-trivial. Skylaxians. Yes, and the lovely thing about the Skylaxians is while they suck at ground combat, compared to the 3.0 billion fleet power, or ground power, their fleet power, as it stands, is actually greater than the Thoraxians. So they like us. So next question is, do we want to give another spa group spacefaring tech? And if so, who? Yes. Andor. Yes. Andor. Uh, let's... Wait, which one is the... Base... The dog-like people? Burlust. The the... Oh, Borings. Burlust. Sorry. Borings, Borings are the ones that are animalistic. Give the Borings. Okay. So Andor's then Borings? Yes. Mm -hmm. To the Halo world indeed. Friendly action, hired diplomat. And deliver spacefaring tech. Alright, let's hope that these unique bullet patterns don't screw me so heavily. Hold our fire, go. Okay, I might actually be able to move fast enough. And then slow down for the hoedown. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to trigger one probe at least from the Thoraxians, but that's not a horrible issue. Oh no, it's just out of range. The Andors are now spacefaring. Their benevolent nature may make them a source of help. Hey, there's a new tech progress button under your basic info tab at the solar map on the solar map. It shows you what technologies you and all the races have researched. By the way, don't worry about memorizing this, you can read it again any time. There's nothing super complicated about the concept of technologies. Once you or a race have a check mark in their column on the tech progress screen, that's it. You know technology and can get whatever benefits it confers. There's a lot of different kinds of technologies. Some benefit your flagship directly, and those ones are grouped at the top of the tech grid. They typically do things like increasing hull strength, improving your science, or manufacturing skills, etc. A lot of them have no direct benefit to you. You're no planetary power, so you don't need things like safer nuclear power, for instance, but these technologies are of immense value to your allies and enemies. Help your allies get what they need, and you'll be that much closer to forming the Federation. Don't underestimate the power of science. If a race gets far enough ahead in the number of techs they have learned, they can absolutely dominate enemy races that have much larger fleets. How do you fit in? Well, I can now research technology as dispatch missions and hire scientist goons to make it less time consuming. Lastly, under hostile actions, I can now raid for tech to steal. I just have to recruit and inform it so I can get their underworld. Ooh, interesting. So apparently my game is slightly incomplete and doesn't have the portrait for the world of this place. So... Uninstall, maybe? Possibly. I might have to uninstall, reinstall, but that should be fine. 
So, those are the Andors. They're even weaker on the ground than the Skylaxians, but they are still stronger in space. So to the Boreans. Ah, fair enough, Dark. We had already agreed to go to the Boreans, so I'm just going to go with that as our last action. Diplomat. And spacefaring tech. Oh, baby. I can see how this is going to suck already. So, yeah, it's bad what? choices, bad choices, bad choices. It's not bad choices, bad choices. It's There's no real way to actually go through with this. The sensor bullet patterns will make it physically impossible for me to go around, unless I could somehow cheese this. Which I think I might be able to... barely. So, immediate turn... Hang on. So we're going to do this, a little bit around, and this to a sharp turn into go. And I somehow escaped with the Borings without alerting a single species. Impressive. The Borings are now spacefaring. They are solitary and dangerous. They may be a difficult ally. Well, difficult ally indeed. However, the lovely thing about this now is that I'm basically going to say that my vote will now always be against awakening yet another species. If only because I will now be guaranteed to lose influence with at least one species when going through it, just because the bullet patterns will be near impossible. Peltians are easy to get. Acutians, I could just sell them something. Evex, eh, I can work with them. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do we wish to do? Is there a particular race we want to elevate to the star? Not elevate to the stars, but yeah. elevate beyond all others right now as our main allies? Or... The oh, we're gonna go Borings. The dog people. Because last time they got wiped out early on. And we I tried well to save them. Off. Yeah, so I'm let's just... push him off the edge and make him dominate. Give them the world of our dreaded enemies, the Thoraxians. Fair enough. I'm also just hiring some diplomats with other races, because occasionally you can get a mission that would uplift them with very little problem. I know, Rourke, you want to kill the bugs. The biggest issue with trying to kill the bugs right now, though, is that there's just no conceivable way to do so. We have our armies in orbit, but we don't have any ground forces, so we're stuck waiting. Anyway, to the Boreen Regent. As a race of solitary quadrupeds, the Boreens seem hardly poised to take over the sol solar stage. That said, in their own quiet way, they're extremely powerful. They are excessively logical. If their regents believe that the Federation is truly in their best interest, they will be a staunch ally. If they fear the Federation... Your gift of Starflight will not soon be forgotten, my dear friend. Well, local Uther deals. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you to colonize your moon. Let's go get some resources for you, shall we? Oh, Acutians this time around have the ability to launch moons. Interesting. And there are no other deals to do, so let us... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so time passed. Oh my gosh, their population is tiny. You know what we're going to do? Friendly actions. I want to... Assist with Armada Construction? What are they? They're actually the dominant space power right now. The Borings? Yeah, they have the best space fleet, so let's just make that a little bit better. Let us yes. assist with Armada Construction. 
Also, we need to push him so far over the edge that no one can threaten him. I'm going to drop the ultimate race. I'm going to drop the music volume because for some reason it decided to make the music blaringly loud. Okay. Be back in one second. I'm just grabbing me a drink real quick. Fair enough. We're only going for like 30 minutes more, if even that. I've returned. Teeth worms are on the rise. Just so you, uh, know. And don't go over there where they are. Also, your Twitch chat <laughs> still says dead cells, by the way. Um, refresh the stream. Well, you'd have to refresh the stream, but it's no longer supposed to be doing that. Okay, back already. Fair enough. Also, by the way, the Acutian military has a secret proposal to gain spacefaring tech. My name is LD31, and I work for an aerospace firm. As you've no doubt heard, we are still working to gain the technology of manned spaceflight. There's currently some sort of military operation going on in our upper atmosphere. Involving races that are already spacefaring, they seem to have found some sort of abandoned technology of yours, as best as I can tell from their radio chatter. If you swoop in and manage to crash at least one of their flagships into our planet, we can use the technology to get ourselves into space. Nobody will realize that you made this deal with us, they'll simply think that you were trying to reclaim your lost tech. And if you destroy them all, who knows, maybe you can. Hmm. Note this race is most suited to their planet out of the remaining races that are not yet spacefaring. This would make them a very good ally. If all enemy flagships are killed to gain a hydro tech, Acutians will become spacefaring. So, what do you think? Make the Acutians spacefaring? I say we go it. All right. Yeah.